sideways. outside would have been a beautiful morning to be hunting out hunting but my dear sweet wife Eileen, Eileen reminded me where my priorities are so here I am but. <laughs> do we have any visitors no do we have any joys Calvin and I went up yesterday to the Ironman Summit, and uh, uh, one of the guys, I don't know for sure exactly how many guys were there, but it was a lot. There was, there was no seating in the main auditorium uh, left there, when, so we had to go into an overfill room. But uh, there, uh, I heard him say, I heard one person say there was about 750 guys up there. Uh, going there. <coughs> Learning more, delving deeper into the word. Uh, this time, a lot of the speakers talked about discipleship and how God called not just the pastors, but every, uh, every person to go out and make disciples of all nations, teaching them what I commanded. Hmm. So, it was a good conference. Well, I have a joy. You know, our little, I don't know if you realize it, but our little church is truly blessed. It really is blessed. And, uh, I've been coming here about, oh, what, 12 years, ain't it, Eileen? I think 12 years. And there's no arguing in the church, and then everybody gets along. There's no dissension. And uh, I'm very proud to be a part of it. And it's a joy. So thank, thank the Lord for that. Is there any other joys? No. We'll go to announcements then. We're praying, the Ebenezer prayer family this week is Colton and Catherine, Stevie and their family. So that's who we're going to be praying for. Janitors for Jesus. We are needing janitors for Jesus to clean the church and the fellowship hall. And there's a sign-up sheet at the back if you want to help. Supply drive. The ladies' fellowship is doing a supply drive for the fellowship hall, kitchen items, bathroom items, and so forth. Uh, the next one there today, this evening at 7 o'clock, uh, there's going to be a movie here at the church. Uh, it's free, um, but uh, it's called Life Mark, and it is, uh, uh, there's a, it's actually it's a, a movie that was made out of a documentary uh, called I Lived on Parker Avenue. But anyways, uh, it is a true story, and uh, we're, we're going to watch that to celebrate Sanctity of Life Sunday, which is today. Uh, so... This whole month, actually, is a, a Sanctity of Life month. But, uh, the March for Life went off in, in, uh, in Washington, D.C. So Sanctity of Life Sunday is what we're celebrating today. Free movie, come on up here at 7 o'clock and, and watch it with me. Tomorrow, <clears throat> tomorrow night, there's a prayer meeting before the Bible study with Merle and Joan following the hall. And there is Ezekiel chapter 40. That's where they'll be studying. Tuesday, uh, January 24th is All God's Children. Wednesday, January the 25th is a youth group. All junior high and high school students are welcome. Bring a friend, Tyson. Um, the next one, uh, Left Behind movies. Uh, I don't, some of you may have seen the originals back, I think they were in the 80s. Kirk Cameron was one of the ones that was in them. But anyway, they're picking up kind of where they left off. And so this one, Kevin Sorbo's in it. I can't remember who all else is in it. Uh, but there's a flyer up here on the on the uh, wall and over on the door over there if you want to take a look at it. Uh, but it's only going to be up there for uh, about four days uh, at the uh, theater. So if you want to watch that, uh, I got an opportunity to watch it, and it is a it is a pretty good movie. And hopefully, I'm not going to be here for the rapture. That's my plan. Or I'm going to be gone after the rapture. But this is where it's at after the rapture. What's going on? And uh, 
There will still, of course, be opportunities for people to be saved after the rapture, but I don't think we want to go through that. Uh, and, and so uh, the uh, next one there is uh, uh, Encounter the Cross, and I've invited several of the men to go with me. If I haven't invited you, here's your invitation. Uh, February 2nd through the 4th, and we'll be leaving and headed up to uh, Webster Conference Center. And then that next one, I got this information sent to me in an email. Uh, it was from a friend of our congregation. Uh, it's a bunch of Emporia State professors, apparently, uh, that uh, have decided that they uh, uh, want to present the scientific, the biblical evidence for the actual truth in the Bible, Genesis 1 through 11. And so they're having a conference down in uh, Bel Air, down by Wichita, if I remember my geography well enough. And they're going to have a couple days there where they uh, present information about the actual, the scientific proof to back up the, the Bible as far as the Genesis account, 1 through 11 of Genesis. Uh, so it's a free event, but uh, they need you to register so they know how much food to have available uh, on the Saturday. <coughs> This Wednesday, February the 15th at 6, well, not this Wednesday, but February the 15th at 6.30, the youth group is going to host a Valentine's dinner at the church. And if you're interested, get with Colton or Andy to get tickets for it. Saturday, February the 18th, the men's fellowship breakfast. On that note, uh, the Madison guys come up yesterday, about five or six of them, I believe, and uh, ate with us. And we had a really good discussion about this, what the, which way they're headed on the disaffiliation and which way we're headed. So that was really enjoyable, with having breakfast with them. Tuesday, February the 21st at 6.30 is a ladies' fellowship breakfast. Tyson. And then I've got another movie. There's a poster up for it. Uh, it's called Jesus Revolution. And back in the 70s, uh, this actually made national news. It was on the cover of Time magazine. Uh, started out in California in the Bay Area uh, with a pastor by the name of Chuck Smith. And he uh, uh, ended up working with another pastor uh, named Lon, or Lonnie Frisbee. Uh, and they, uh, Lonnie was kind of a hippie pastor. And so there was a movement that spread not only through that area, but through the, it spread across the United States at that time called the Jesus Movement, the Jesus Revolution. Uh, some of the songs that refer, that, that uh, talk about like the Jesus Freaks came from that, that movement. And so um, some, some, some people that you guys know, or some of you know, uh, were actually out there at the time that this happened, Merle and Joan Rockwell, we're actually out there and we're part of this church for a while that, that the movie's about. Uh, so it's coming to the movie theater on uh, February 24th. And Thanks. it's definitely a good one to watch. March 10th through the 12th is a women's encounter at the cross. Is there any other announcements? Well, I know Rex, he took over this area road grading and he, he'd love to have your input. And I think he said he's going to put his number back here on the board in case you need to call him. <laughs> right, right, Rex. <laughs> you're a good, you're a good guy, Rex. They say you're doing an outstanding job. <laughs> pay, pay, pay back. <laughs> oh, is there any other announcements? Nope. Okay, we'll go to birthdays. Any birthdays? Donna? Okay. Donna have one? <laughs> Any other birthdays? Well, Donna, you look younger every day. You know, I mean that. And you knew who I was today, too. There we go. Are there any other birthdays? Let's sing a happy birthday to Donna. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Any anniversaries? No? We'll go to the children's message.
All right. Good morning, good people. How you all doing? You all right? Yes. Everybody doing good? Yes. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So before we go into our lesson, we can remember what I asked you all to do last Sunday. To get the three words, okay. And who all did it? Okay. All right. So Coulter, you, you, Coulter, you, did you get the three words too? All right. What, what, what were the three points that I talked about last night? Knowledge. Hmm? There was knowledge. No, I said Colton. <laughs> you don't remember? Okay. That is thankful knowledge and fellowship. Hmm. Thankful knowledge and fellowship. Let's double check that. Pastor said, don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. All right. You say you got it too? You remember? Okay, tell me what else. Knowledge, thankful, and fellowship. Okay, good, good, good. I know too. You know too? Okay, what is that? Thankful, knowledge, and fellowship. Okay, you know too? Thankful, knowledge, and fellowship. All right, good. You know too? All right, so, so I got to, so I confirmed that with your teacher, and who's your Sunday school teacher? Rachel. Rachel? Okay. So I confirmed that with your Sunday school teacher, and Miss Crystal told me that Emmy, Brandley, Mary, Emre, and Sophia got it right in the class. So each one of you are gonna get a present from me. There you go. That's a gift card. There's a gift card. There's a gift card. It is a gift card. Coulter, you're gonna get your own gift card next week, okay? Thank you, Pastor John. You're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you. So, that is great. That is great. You all remember everything. Coulter, you're gonna get your own gift card for me next week. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get to. I didn't get to talk with your, with your, with your teacher, and, and so, so. But you're gonna get your gift card since you remember that. Okay. So, so today we're gonna to talk about the mind. Who knows what the mind is? What's the mind? Okay, good. What's the mind? Okay, good. <laughs> that's what it is. I didn't understand it, but that's what it is. <laughs> all right, so, go to your right, the mind. So we all got our own mind. But it is very, very important that we have the mind of Jesus. And having the mind of Jesus, there are also three things that we need to have to be a part of us to have the mind of Jesus. Number one is that we must be connected to Jesus. Number two, to have the mind of Jesus, we must have hope. And number three, we must have the power of God. Okay? So to have the mind of Jesus, what the first thing we must do? Be connected. Be connected. Okay, what's the second thing? Hope. What's the third thing? Power of God. Yes. So to be connected to Jesus <laughs> means that we are part of Jesus because we believe in Jesus, we trust in Jesus, and we know that Jesus will be there for us, always. That's how we get connected to Jesus. To have hope in Jesus 
means that whatever happens in our life, whether we feel sad or we feel happy, we have hope that Jesus will always be there for us so that we will be with Jesus whenever we pass on from this earth. So that's our hope, okay? And the power to have the mind of Jesus means that to have power means that once we have the mindset of Jesus, we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. Meaning that with Jesus' mind, which is our mind, whatever we put our mind to, we can do it because we have the power of God. Now, does that mean that every time we will get what we want? No. But with God's power, we know that we can always overcome and have the peace of Jesus Christ. Okay? All right. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. We ask that you continue to be with us. Help us, dear God, to have the mind of Jesus so that we will always be connected, have hope, and the power is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Everybody go get yourself a treat. Treat time. Come on, buddy. Go get yourself a treat. Would you please stand for our gathering hymn? It's one church, one foundation. It's in the insert or worship his majesty, 331. Please join me in the call to worship. Today is a day of rejoicing. It's a time to celebrate. Jesus offers us a plan of action. No longer are we trapped, wondering what we should be doing. Jesus speaks to us freedom, release from captivity, recovery of the sight. Jesus outlines the kind of disciples that are needed in God's world. Please join me in the opening prayer. 
Heavenly Father, <clears throat> you have called us in the body of our Son, Jesus Christ, to continue his work of reconciliation and reveal you to the world. We are encouraged to become involved in ministries of peace and justice. The light of promise is reflected in your spirit, which was rest in each one of us. Get us ready to serve you. Guide our lives as we learn more of what you would have us do through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is How Great Thou Art. It's in the flyer or Worship His Majesty 111.
You may be seated. The Old Testament reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 10 through 18. The bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries of Razine against him and join his enemies together. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not into him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and the honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. They are <clears throat> led of them that are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercies on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burneth as a fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest and they shall mount up like lifting up of smoke. The epistle today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am Paul, and I am Apollos, and I am Cephas, and I am Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gallius, Gaius. Least any should say that I baptized in my own name, and I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, words. Least the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishly. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? And the gospel today comes from Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 through 23. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt into Capernaum, which is upon the Sea coast in the northern borders of, Ze borders of Zebulon and Nethalom, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light and sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting it into the sea, net into the sea, for they were fishers. He saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw two other brethren, James and the son of Zebedee and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called unto them, and they immediately left their ship and their father and followed them. And Jesus went out about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. This is the word of God to the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. I magnify your name for all that you continue to do in our lives. 
Now, dear God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please repeat after me. To teach and preach God's word. To teach and preach God's word. Making disciples of Jesus Christ. Making disciples of Jesus Christ. By growing a healthy church. To include prayers. Worship. Proclamation. Evangelism. And compassion. That is our vision statement. Amen and amen. Uh, Ms. Shirley, please do me a favor. Let's sing the last stanza of How Great Thou Art. <clears throat> No, just the last, the last verse, verse four, and then the chorus. be to God. How great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home while joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art. My fellow believers, this hymn is one of my favorite hymns. And I sing this hymn every time I feel myself going in a state of depression because it reminds me that God loves me because he is great. And I know that when he comes, he will take me home. The sermon for this morning is the mind of Christ. And usually when the bulletin is prepare and goes out, I take a look at some of the songs, but this one I didn't really look at it. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me when that song was being sung, and it reminds me that we all must have the mind of Jesus Christ. It is so important that we have that mind of Christ because it puts us in a place where we know that regardless of what we are dealing with or what we are going through, God is with us. And so as I listen to this hymn and it begins to touch something in my soul, 
It reminds me that regardless of how I feel or what I do, God is always with me through his son, Jesus Christ. And so this morning, as we, as I share with you the, the word that God and the message that God has for us as we go forward, is that we must always have that mind of Jesus Christ. And to have that mind of Jesus Christ, the first thing is that we must be connected with Jesus Christ. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, uh, he talks about having the mind of Christ. And he goes on to share with the folks in Corinth in verse, in chapter 1, verse 10. He goes on to say that, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you. You know, earlier, Terry shared with you his own testimony. And he said that for the past 12 years, that he, 12 plus years that he's been a member of this congregation, there have been no division. And in essence, what that means is that the spirit of the Lord is in this place. Amen. And it's always been in this place before those 12 years. And as Paul began to speak to the Christians in Corinth, he reminds them that first and foremost, that they are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And that connects them to God and Jesus. You see, Isaiah tells us in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, he says that the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And Jesus also reiterates this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, when he says that, uh, 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 light here means that we are in the presence of God. And so being in the presence of God, we are all connected in Jesus Christ. Having that same mind and being in the light means that Christ has connected us through his death, his suffering, his death, his resurrection and ascension in glory. And why is that so important? It is so important for us because we all are sinners in the eyes of God. And because of Jesus Christ and that light, we are connected. And so we must have the mind of Christ. Paul reminds us in Romans 3 and 23, which states that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yes, we are all sinners. <clears throat> but because of our sins and Christ's death on Calvary, we are connected with Jesus Christ. You see, my fellow believers, we can disagree. We can have various opinions. But we must always have a sense of connection to build a community of love. And so John 3 and 7, John 3 and 17 reminds us that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Therefore, God's love for us had him to lend his son, Jesus Christ, to this world 
through his death so that we can build a community of love. Our responsibility, my fellow believers, is to love each other as Christ loved us. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 reminds us that for by grace we have been saved through faith and not our own doing. It is a gift of God. And so we must not boast. And therefore, my fellow believers, having the mind of Jesus Christ means that we are connected with Jesus Christ. Secondly, the mind of Jesus Christ in us means that we have hope. Hope for tomorrow. Hope knowing that regardless of what happens in our lives, we will be with God Almighty through his son, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 and 17, Christ proclaimed the word. Paul reminds us about the gospel. And Christ goes far, further in Matthew 4 and 17, reminding us that we must repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Hope, I said earlier, is knowing that we will be with Jesus Christ. But my fellow believers, in everything that we do, in this journey of faith, we have a responsibility. We have a task that we too must accomplish. Did Jesus Christ die on Calvary? Yes, he did. Did Jesus forgive our sins? Yes, he did. Did Jesus stand in the gap for us? Yes, he did. We have to pay no price. But we have a responsibility. And our responsibility is to be repented of our sins. We must repent. And so Matthew 4 and 17, Jesus reminds us that we must repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. My fellow believers, our hope which lies in Jesus Christ and his message of repentance gives us that assurance, that blessed assurance that we will be with Jesus once we repent. So to have the mind of Christ, we must become repentant and hope in the Lord. My fellow believers, we will encounter challenges. We will encounter difficulties. But with the mind of Jesus Christ, we can rejoice in hope. We can be patient in our trials and tribulation and constantly in prayer because Jesus is always with us. The hope, my fellow believers, is knowing that regardless of what goes on in our lives, things will be all right because God is on our side. You see, God has a plan for you and I. Because the prophet Jeremiah reminds us in Jeremiah 29, 11, says, Therefore I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Yes, Jesus has a plan for us, a plan to make us prosperous spiritually, a plan to give us that hope, of being with him. And so to have the mind of Christ, we must have that hope. Finally, to have the mind of Christ, we must have the power of God, the power of God. You see, with the mind of Jesus Christ, you can do miraculous things. You can do great things. 
because of the power of God. God gave his power to Jesus. Jesus could have stopped everything that was coming his way. But he was responsible for the power he had. And so likewise, we too must be responsible with the power for which God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ. You see, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 states, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. What is Paul saying here? The message is foolishness to those who are perishing. What that means is that those who do not believe in God Almighty, those who do not believe that Christ died on the cross, and after three days he rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven, for them that message is foolishness. They don't believe in it. But for us believers, the message of the cross, Jesus Christ's resurrection is power, is powerful. And so Paul reminds us that the power of God rests within that message of the cross. And so when you have the mind of Jesus Christ, you have the power of God. You see, God gave Jesus Christ power over all the heaven and the earth, according to Matthew 28 and 18. But that power didn't stop there. Jesus Christ gave that power to you and me when he stated in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, when he told us to go ye and and make disciples of Jesus Christ, which is the Great Commission. That is the power that is given you. It is in your heart. It is in your mind. It is in your soul that you have the power to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And so, therefore, my fellow believers, with the power of God, we must fear not because Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 reminds us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. In essence, my fellow believers, with the power of God, you have that ability to walk in the valley of the shadow of death, and you will fear no evil. Know that you will be able to threat over scorpions and, and snakes and, and walk in the presence of lions and you will not be afraid because God's power is with you once you have that mind of Jesus Christ. My fellow believers, as I close, I want us to, to want each and every one of us to know that the power of God we have through the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. You see, when the spirit of truth comes, that spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, will guide us into all truth, and we will be able to speak with authority over all things. And that is the power of God. My fellow believers, the mind of Christ is the power of God, which is the message of the cross that can transform lives. Yes, some of us are dealing with issues and problems within our lives, but with the power of God, we can overcome those issues and problems. Yes, some of us are having a situation where our loved ones are struggling along the way. But with that message of the cross and the power of God, their lives can be transformed. You see, Romans 1 and 16 reminds us 
that we must not be ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. My, friend, my fellow believers, the power of Christ can make all things new. With the power of God, we have access to the Holy Spirit that provides guidance in our lives because Jesus reminds us in John 14 and 26 that the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in Jesus' name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that Jesus has taught us. So know, my fellow believers, that with the power of God, we can become strengthened and be spiritually energized. Therefore, my encouragement to each of us this morning is to have the mind of Jesus Christ. And we can only have the mind of Jesus Christ once we are connected to Jesus Christ. Have that hope knowing that Christ will be with us and most especially having the power of God. And that's how we have the mind of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen and amen. You have heard the word of God for the people of God this morning. Are there any prayer concerns? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you and glorify your name for this day. We come, Lord, now asking that you be with us. Forgive us of all our sins. And Lord, let our ear be let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant. We come presenting to you the baby of the Williams family. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with that child. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to heal his body, even though he has come home. But dear God, whatever that is taking over his body right now, we claim your blessings and your healing in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you put your hands of protection around that child, Heavenly Father, and continue to keep him in your care. We pray also for our dear brother Danny, who injured and, and, and fractured his leg. That dear God, we pray for your healing upon him. We pray that dear Jesus, that you will heal his body, Heavenly Father, and restore the activities of his limbs. Heavenly Father, we just magnify your name and know that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ever ask, for you, ask of you. We also present disease family to you as the mother has passed on to glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you for her life, dear God, and the life that she lived and instilled in each and every one of her family members. Heavenly Father, we pray now that you be with, that, with the family, Heavenly Father especially Mark. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to keep them, give them that comfort and peace, knowing that it will be all right. That dear Jesus, that the mother that is gone with you, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to comfort the family in the time of grief. We also present our church to you, Heavenly Father. God, we thank you for the love that has been rooted in this congregation, that dear Jesus, there is no division of whatsoever. Lord, we know that we can all have our differences, but dear Jesus, you continue to guide us and keep us in your care. And we ask your continuous blessings upon this congregation. Bless each and every member here present, Lord, individually and collectively. Guide us, Lord, and show us that which you want us to do ask your blessings on our children. Keep them safe. Now, dear God, as your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ has taught us to pray. We are bold to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgave those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, for deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please prepare your hearts for our tithes and offerings. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. thank you for this gift that you have given to us as we return it to you for the building of your kingdom. We ask your blessings upon it. Bless those who give and those who desire to give or are unable to give. These and many are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for our sending forth hymn with a story to tell to the nations. In the worship of His Majesty 673 and United Methodist Hymn 569. And also it can be found in your insert.
receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you as you depart this place, but never from the presence of God. Go in peace and be blessed. Amen. Are you looking for a church family, some place that you can call home? Well, consider joining our Ebenezer family. There's uh, no dress code at Ebenezer. We welcome the person and we don't worry about uh, what you're wearing. The dress is mostly going to be country casual. Uh, if you want to wear your Sunday best though, please do so. Uh, but if you're on your way in from work or headed to work, uh, just stop on in. The only suggestion that we have is if you've been out working the cattle, uh, please uh, scrape your boots and clean them off before you come in the building. We have weekly opportunities to worship and to uh, be in fellowship with uh, the others at the church building. Uh, Sunday worship begins at 9 a.m. in the sanctuary. And then following our Sunday worship, we have Sunday school where we have classes for all ages starting at 1025. The adults meet out in the fellowship hall while the youth meet in the sanctuary and in the classrooms that are behind our sanctuary. If you are looking to get closer uh, to God through his word and learn more about the Bible, have we got a deal for you. On Monday nights at 6.30 in our fellowship hall, we have a Bible study that is led by Merle and Joan Rothwell. And in this Bible study, they go through the Word of God. They go through the book, then they go through it verse by verse and chapter by chapter. And Merle and Joan have studied underneath uh, rabbis and the Jewish, and so they understand some of the Jewish traditions in a way that some of us uh, as Christians have never heard before. So come and join that Bible study and learn more about what the Old Testament has to say and what the New Testament has to say for us Christian believers. On Tuesdays, the, in cooperation with the Little White Church down in Olpe, we have an opportunity for the kids during the school year uh, to go to All God's Children. All God's Children starts at 335 uh, and ends about 445. They need you to come pick the kids up then. But uh, it is a great time for the kids to, uh, to learn more about God. Then on Wednesday nights for our youth, uh, from junior high age to uh, high school, the high school youth group meets, or the, or the uh, Ebenezer youth group meets, and they meet at 7 p.m. out in the fellowship hall. We also have some monthly opportunities. Our ladies uh, meet on the third Tuesday of every month, and they have fellowship together. So if you'd like to learn more about the Bible and hang out with the ladies, uh, well, come on out and join the ladies at 6.30 p.m. on the third Tuesday of the month. The guys, well, anytime that we're involved, we have to have breakfast. And so there's a breakfast for the guys. Uh, we start breakfast at 8 a.m. on the third Saturday of the month. And then after the breakfast, which normally finishes up about 8.30, we go ahead and have a short devotion. We're out of there by 9 o'clock so that you can go on and continue on with your day's activities. Uh, so uh, go ahead and come out and join us uh, for the men's breakfast if you like. The church is located four and a half miles west of Olpe on Road 70. And so if you want to come out, just leave Olpe headed west and you'll go off the gravel, off the paved road a little bit, off on the gravel, and then you'll be uh, see the church on the north side or the right-hand side of the road as you're coming out from Olpe. We would really like to ask that God bless you exceedingly and abundantly, and we sure hope that you'll consider coming out and taking a look at Ebenezer Church, visiting us, and maybe becoming part of our family. So we sure hope to see you soon. God bless.